I measure like this. And I measure like this. So this is the length that I need to cut for the back. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's get this quick and easy hair done. I promise you, you won't regret it. I love, 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 love this hair. All right, guys, I know I said <laughs> this will be quick and easy, but it wasn't. And if you're one of those who love to skip, I would say please watch the video to the end. I'll try to shorten it when I'm editing, but. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rhonda. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. What are you waiting for? And if you're a returning subscriber, oh my gosh, you know how we do it here. I love you and let's get into this video. In today's video, we are going to be doing clip-ins into my hair. So, we're adding extensions into my hair, but I'm creating my own clip-ins. I bought the hair. The hair is called Kinky Perm. And it's more of a natural look. I really, really don't know much about this hair. I'll be updating you guys in the comments. So once I post the video, maybe like about a week or two, you guys, when you see the video, ask me how it's going and I will let you know in the comments if it was a good hair or if it was a bad hair. But this is my first time using this hair. And it is in the color one beak because that is my hair color. And it is 14 inches of hair. So I don't know if you can see, but I won't be lying to you about the hair <laughs> length. So the hair length is 14 inches. It's called Kinky Perm, and you can find it at your local beauty supply. That's where I found the hair. The clip-ins, I'm going to be using these snap-on clip-ins. I'm going to be sewing these onto the hair. You can do this, anyone can do this. I would advise to maybe use a straight needle like this and not the curved one. I'm just using a regular black thread. This thread, it's rough and, and I don't like it very much, but this is all I have. I will much rather like a softer sewing thread and not these like wiry looking thread but this is all I have so I'm going to work with it so if this is all you have hey you can work with it but without further ado guys let's get into the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel like the video because that pushes the video out to more people that are looking for hair type like yours so please help us reach more people we're a very small community here and I love to have you I started the video out telling you guys to use this needle instead of the curved one so i asked you to use these but the problem with these is they're too thick to go through these holes right here the holes that hooks on to the hair itself so let me give you a quick demonstration on how i did this if you don't get it just rewind it and you should get it by the end of it so with this clip here, you attach it to the hair. All right, so once you attach the clip like this to the hair, then you need to grab the edge of it. Using the needle, you pass the needle through the hair, tie the ends. You know how to sew, right? Well, I didn't tie the end, let me tie the end. <laughs> tie the end, and you don't want to lose ends, so you tie the end. So you don't want a knot of the tied ends outside, on the outside of the hair. So you start on the inside, through the pen and then through the hair but at the very end because you don't want loose ends of your hair out then you pull through the needle and then you go back in into the same spot of the clip in and you secure it like that okay see right there you go back in here like that you do that all the way around in there like that and you want to do that until you sew everything the same way until you attach you want to be careful doing this and not to rough up the outside because that's the part that your hair is going to be covering and you don't want it to look jacked up. And then when you get to the end here, you want to make sure that you secure. Don't let it get tangled up like I'm doing right now. So you want to secure it and you secure like this and you secure. Wrap it around twice, secure again. 
This is a very tedious process if you want it to look good. If you already have a clip-in, it should be easy. And if you don't want to be like me to overachieve to do it yourself, I would tell you it was a long process. It took me four hours, almost two bundles of the hair that I got, and I wouldn't do it again. I mean, I love the hair, but I wish I didn't waste four hours. But I am done securing the hair. You see how it looks. It's attached to the clip-ins. And you want to do it like this to where you can open the clip-ins, clip it into your hair, and secure it like that. So for this hair, I ended up doubling because <laughs> it was just a lot for me to do to continue to just do it pen by pen. But when you double the sewing, make sure one is up and one is down. So it's not completely puffed up. So you see how I sewed it? And I just gently sewed so that you can barely see any thread coming through here so you just want to gently sew from the bottom slide it down and then put your needle under here and then through there slowly and you don't have to get aggressive with the thread and the needle look here you can barely see any thread there don't get aggressive i did it last time i learned i'll show you my mistake last time that i made as this is my second time doing this hair, I was just too lazy to record it. My mistake that I made last time, you could see, uh, I don't know if you can see clearly, but you would see the, the thread going through, going through, and I sewed it together, and it was just bumpy. It, it looked so bumpy on my head. So you wanna do it seamless like that, and not so much like this. See, you can see, I don't know if you can see the difference, but. Yeah, that's it. Moving on. What I do for my cutting and setting is I take a hair like this. And I'll take the hair and measure from here. You don't want to measure from the starting point of the hair because you want to leave part of the hair out so that your clip-ins are not showing on the ends of your hair. So this is the length that I need to cut for the back. I would do that until like I get to here. Here, depending on what style I want, I cut like that. So then I take the same hair, I go like this, I measure here, and then I measure here. And this time I'll be cutting a bigger piece, a much like larger piece. Because I'm gonna be doing middle part. When I come here, I measure like the middle part, like here, like how I want it, and I do this cut here and then I cut it like this so that's how I'm doing it and then put the clip-ins on there I just wanted to let you guys know all right so now that we're past the point where I had to do all of this just the way you saw me do it just now now it's time for the fun part to insert these clip-ins into my hair I'm gonna part here I hope you guys can see the back of my hair okay so I use these tiny needles instead of the bigger ones uh, so that they are much easier to manage through the web. All right, so before when I would do my clip-ins, I would just put them on. But now what I learned from my stylist at the salon is to rough it up a little bit to give it that tight hold that you want. So I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna rough it up a little. And the bottom part of my hair, the reason why I'm not flat ironing it is because I need it to hold and my afro and my curls back there will hold it tighter than a full blown straight hair. So you open the clip-ins, open the clip-ins like this, you open them up. And once you're done roughing up the hair, you put them in, you don't, you don't start here because then that part is going to be out. That's why when I told you in the beginning to cut the hair according to the measurement, leaving that part out. Secure the clip-ins, come over here secure the clip-ins as well. All right, now I'm going to repeat that method. So I'm not gonna put another clip-ins on top of this one. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna part, leave space in between the hair and the clip-ins because I can't put a clip-in on top of another clip-in. And now it's the part where I will probably wanna use my flat iron right here to have this hair laid down so I can put another clip-ins on. All right, so now I'm going to go over the hair that I left out with my flat iron. That's just to smooth things over. And then remember, it does not have to be completely soft, especially if you have natural hair. You don't have to burn your hair for that part. But the second hair that I'm cutting out, 
I'm going to be putting a clip in on there as well. So we go again, we rough up. Turning around this couch is a nightmare, so, because I've got stuff everywhere for my hair. So you guys know what I did, the first one is exactly what I'm doing, just roughing the hair up so that the hair... So you see with the thicker hair like this? I'm just gonna go in, pop the pin open, close up my clip ends, and if you're sewing this, if the hair is too thick... Put three clips on it, it's better. For the longer hair, sew three clips on it. You will not regret sewing three clips on your hair. Right, so this one's too long, it's sticking out on my hair here and I don't want that because when I put my hair in a ponytail, I don't want part of my clip and sticking out. So I have to find a shorter hair until I get to the widest side of my head. All right, this one might be shorter. Let's try this one out. So just part two rows, one to lay over. The next one is to put the clip in some. So I'm gonna use this thicker hair again. All right, so I'm gonna put the rest of the hair in and I'll come back with the finished product or at least at the end so you see how I close it up. I'm trying to put minimal heat on my hair as possible so you won't see me going all the way from the roots. I'll just go here from the top part of my hair.
right, so this is of my own making. I cut my hair one time, I was taken out. <laughs> <laughs> or crochet hair so that hair has been a nightmare to deal with but you shouldn't have that problem because you are not as silly as me to cut the hair in the middle of your head so, at this point you can do whatever you like you can make a bangs if you want to make a bangs you take this out this piece out If you want to make a bang, so here you go. I'll find something to do with this hair. It's still standing because I cut it, but it will fix itself. Still have hair left over. It's the one bundle. So all you need, guys, is two packs and nothing more, unless you want to go crazy. <laughs> I think I might have used like three or four of these packs to do my clip-ins. So if you like, make sure you have at least three on each one, unless it's the very smaller ones that can only take two or one. For the hair in the back, you want to use two, and for the little ends here, you want to use one. And then in the middle parts, you want to use always, always three or four. Like from here to here, from here to here, you might want to use like four. Around here, three. The back, two. Here, one. And maybe two. Two for the long stretch, one for the ends here that's going to give you that little... Ah. Alright guys, thank you so much for spending this time with me. This is the finished look of the hair. I showed you how to do the bangs and this one is a side part. If you want to do a middle part, you can. You can always just move the pins around. This is the back of the hair. This is the back. If you want to see the back all the way, this is the back of the hair. I don't know how long this hair is going to last, so you guys please ask your questions in the comment section down below um but obviously if your hair is a lot longer than mine you're gonna have so much fun with this hair but if your hair is short like mine as well you are also going to have fun not as much fun as the girls with the longer hair but we're still gonna have fun with our shorter hair all right and i'm gonna take some pictures now for the finish look for the thumbnail all right guys thank you once again for subscribing i love you guys so so much and i'll see you down in the comment let's get to know each other let's chat all right bye bye